And here we go. Hey, this is Flash at 20% off on Thursday night, the 6th of June, 2019. And uh, we're at reallibertymedia.com. As usual, the home home base of this great thought think tank. Thought think tank. <laughs> past tense. Anyway, like to say uh, hello and thanks to Grim and hello to everybody, the bots and bodies in the RLM. And we even have this new bot. And some of the bots are really interesting in the RLM because they you can ask them to do your little tasks and they go do them for you like like we like we control them or so that's kind of a nice illusion and Rob works brought one in and he, it's learning to uh, to communicate with us and over the months it's shown a little bit of progress I thought so I wanted to just mention that because I always say bots and bodies but uh and I've even had a few people comment, yeah, like Flash says, but, but because I use the bots. So mm, they're kind of uh, something that I grew I grew into be a, using Real Liberty Media. And anyway, tonight for all your reading entertainment in the chat room, anyway, and there's a lot of other stuff to do besides just chat on RLM. But here we go. Barman, Beetle, Cowboy, hey, Cowboy Tech. Grimnir, uh, my number one hostage, Moose Girl, DC Brackets, Anti, Anti Underscore, Asmo, Chalcedony. Let me see if I'm, yeah, I think I'm live because uh, I haven't heard anybody saying anything to the contrary yet. I've had a few months where things just went wrong all the time. Uh, Asmo, Chalcedony, Gramsci, IB Dauncey, Java Doctor 2. Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rome, Savannah, White, Weather Dork, Z Beth Z, Phantom, Circle, Hello Honey, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Me, Frumpy, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Mmm, mm, Smartaz, Van Meter, and Vinny Tawares. Hey, Vinny, you know. That's the lineup. Sometimes people do what I do too. Is they, they're logged in but away and don't mention they're away. So when you do radio, sometimes people are working and they're not near the computer, <laughs> but they're still logged in. So you, I think you got somebody out there to talk to you on the radio podcast. But on 20% off, today's uh, obsession, I think, for me was. The idea that everything that I fucking know is wrong. And use a, a modern day thing would be inoculations. Now, thanks, Grim. And for some reason, to me, when somebody else uses that term, inoculation, my mind clicks, okay, you want to inject another person with a disease so their body will build an immunity to that disease right right and then while they're carrying that disease they're infectious they have a freaking virus in their system so how did we get talked into this uh, absolute opposite of common sense to cure a problem that you don't even freaking have it, it's a made-up problem children's diseases are not lethal so this is rumor and gossip and uh, Chitter chatter, just gone freaking amok. People are doing and saying whatever they freaking want to, and it gets printed or it gets posted or it gets something out into the real world. And then the next thing you know, California is making a freaking law that's going to make inoculations mandatory. You have no choice. You're going to get it or they're going to punish you and give it to you anyway. Hey, wait a minute. Where did all the freedom go? I mean, wasn't it just the other day we were all sitting around a campfire talking about our freedom and, you know, uh, our great life in America and all this, that, and the other. And now, shit, nobody's got time to do anything but work or complain. 
You know, if you're not working, you're probably sniveling about something. And if you're not sniveling about something, then you're working. Now, me, when I'm sniveling about something, it's usually the bigger out of uh, the average guy's control kind of thing. Anyway, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming my peers. I'm so much doing is bringing up the stupidity that we've been believing all these years. And uh, everything proves itself. I mean, in the long run, all you got to do is pay attention. You don't need proof. What you need is the ability to look at the truth and not have your world collapse because it's so disappointing. Hmm. Ah, cracks the whip, says Donna Van Meter. I don't know what crack the whip means. I, oh, maybe I could be a slave master. Hey, I'd be a cool slave master, though. I'd probably get all my slaves high. <laughs> and now that wouldn't be a slave master because what the fuck? Why would I want to force other people to do anything? Uh, I'm not one of those kind of people. I have lived around them my whole life, and been bullied by them, and talked back to, and uh, in competition with that kind of mentality for a long, long time. And I don't think I take it seriously. Is It's more just like watching TV. Some movies just stay with me and I get some great freaking uh, connection to the story like uh, Hannibal. <laughs> that was a great film. Or uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. So that you don't all think I'm just some psycho, you know, that I just only think about serial killers. But yeah, there's, I've got a vast array of interests, but the things that get my attention <laughs> were when I'm speaking, nah, that's a little bit more limited, I think. Now, being on the radio and having the ability to use all these tools, you know, in, at my fingertips makes, it makes this thing just a lot, a lot more interesting than it was, I think. Uh, talking with people is still... Today, uh, Cirque asked me to go get her this certain Danish drink at the grocery tonight. And everybody in Denmark, I mean, they sell like millions and millions of gallons of this. Well, maybe not. Like, she says like four. <laughs> That's a lot to me. But people drink the shit out of this stuff. And it, here we are in this hot day. And I show up and they're all out. So, hmm. But... That's the price that we pay living in the small, you know, the small city. If we wanted to have access to everything instantly, we would have stayed in, in Copenhagen. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, you know, a little discomfort or uh, maybe even disappointing. But it's not, eh, hmm. it could be a bigger deal to a, uh, a small, smaller mind. <laughs> Some people get their mind made up about, I want this, by God, and I'm not going to settle for nothing but, and turn your life into a living hell trying to make them freaking happy. Hmm. So, uh, it's kind of nice to not to not be involved in that kind of shit. Because and I see it all, all around me and other people doing it. So, uh, hmm. when I, I get asked to do something and, and it's close but not quite oh okay well that's better than nothing and that's a good way to be in case you didn't know you know i like it i think uh, most of the people i deal with where i'm friendly with them and uh, we converse and i talk to them by their name there's just like a an underlying sanity to the to the emotional uh, connection to the type and there's never bad words there's never a reason for bad words and all that kind of shit. And I don't know why we don't all do that, but it's, I think Rob's always saying about the vibrations of the frequencies. In the background, he'll make comments. I read them. And I understand them, you know, in my own little way to a point. Um, hmm. Who do you think you are, William Wallace? Who's William Wallace? Is that one of those American um, fathers of the Constitution kind of guys or what? No, I'm not a psycho. I, I could pretend to be a psycho. I could look like a psycho. But no, real, realistically, I really don't enjoy hurting other 
other people. Whenever I've had arguments and fights, I always feel bad when I come out ahead, even because, hey, you know, I wouldn't want to do, I didn't want to do that. That was a result of two people not being able to talk to each other. And that's just the way it is. And then the, whoever's fastest or can aim best wins, whatever that is. And then when it's all over, you go, oh, okay, well, sorry it went to that, but oh, let's get past it. Or you, or you don't. you got two roads you can choose. And I don't think a psycho is capable of choosing um, to get over the, the mistakes that they make. Psychos don't make mistakes. I think psychos see themselves as perfect and Ooh, dig me, I am so cool. Want to touch me? Want to touch me? Uh, I don't think I fall in that category. Because I've made a point of on the radio saying a few times, but to not to be repetitious to do it every show. But I have a lot of opinions about shit. But I don't think I know anything. I think just think I see the world from my perspective of the world. And I interpret it the way it pleases me to interpret it in Getting along with you about that is pointless. I don't even give a shit. Even Cirque doesn't, she doesn't give a fuck. We were joking about that before the show. Because there's just certain topics that it's, it's pointless to try to talk somebody else into seeing your way. And you already know they don't. So just avoid the pitfall of the argument, you know, and just avoid it. But not everybody likes to do that. And there's just some things that are uh, they're so personal, like your taste in a certain food. You can't tell anybody why you like that. You just like it. You like it. You don't like it. One or the other. It's, it's not, well, what day is it? If it's Wednesday, I like it. But if it was uh, Tuesday, yeah, I wouldn't like it so much. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not the robots and the machines that uh, they make us out to be. Turn us on and off. Give us a pill to fix us. You know, the pill will cure you. Pills don't cure shit. Pills keep you ill. And if you do enough reading, I'll tell you somebody on the radio that has all the freaking good stuff on medicine is Grammy Mary, Miss Mary, Graham Z on the Rocket Chair podcast. And if you want to learn about medicine, go see her. And I don't know why uh, it takes so much for people to uh, take an objective look. Well, because it's such, such a subjective thing. But medicine, it's personal. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not something people want to even talk about when you come right down to it. You've got people who are ill, and then you've got whiners. And, you know, whiners are always ill with something. Now, the people that are ill are usually don't want to tell you they're ill. They're trying to find a way to get around being ill. And that doesn't usually include a doctor. I, I think this doctor thing, uh, we were sold something uh, bait and switch style. They said, hey, look, new and improved. But the old stuff was working just freaking fine. The new and improved stuff was, that wasn't to help you. <laughs> Uh-oh, Woody's got... Corona de Tucson, Arizona, and he's at 90.6 Fahrenheit today on this Thursday night. Well, my Thursday night is Thursday day. I'm out here a little ahead of the most of the people that listen to the podcasts I do because I do them in the evening, which is your morning or day, mid-afternoon, what, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 2 o'clock, mm. I'm going to do a Vinny a little early for uh, for the show tonight. I don't care if it's 420 or not. I'm going to prove it. And uh, I found a way to beat the coughing problem so I can, uh, if I can keep this <laughs> to a minimum. I'm stopping smoking what my, what my partner rolls. I'm going to roll my own for, for programs so that I don't end up coughing because she rolls them too good. That's right. I blame the girl. Take her. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Who was it that did that in New York? Uh, I was in New York in '86. So and that oh Billy Billy Idol was pretty big and he was a New Yorker. So anyway, I, I was uh, I was there for about eight months in that year. 
and I heard a story about he was at, in Washington Square, and the law wanted to stop him, and he was holding, but he dumped it on his, on the girl he was with, and she took the she took the fall for the what he was carrying. But I don't know, you know. People tell you stories, or you hear things, or you read things, and then years and years go by. And I can't always remember if it was something I read or something I heard anymore. Except for the, uh, the, uh, the old guys talking about, oh, you don't need a driver's license to drive. That's just that. <laughs> anyway, so I listened to that stuff. Uh, what I didn't listen to, very good was how important it was to go to school and get an education, learn how to be somebody, and all that kind of stuff. All that uh, climbing to the top of the mountain thing didn't didn't hold an appeal for some reason. I can't figure out to this day. But I've always been, uh, not surrounded, but I've always been entangled somehow with smart fucking people that know what the hell is going on. And... Uh, like the, the crowd that I was uh, rattling on about when I said hello to the room by name. A lot of these people are some smart fucking people, you know. But uh, life is not judged in one sense of anything. So everybody looks on, you know, you'll see this person like that and you'll see that person like this, just like I do, right? And uh, I was just making a point is that I look on to you guys and, wow, some... You guys, a lot of you guys know shit I'm not even interested in, but if I ever need the knowledge, I know where to go. And uh, that was that was the thing I read about Henry Ford, that he didn't really need to know anything. He had a group of people that knew things, paid them to know it. That's your job. Your job is to answer my question. Whatever my question is, you will answer it. And Ford wasn't a cheap brick either, so he probably paid them handsomely for their work, whatever their work was. And look where it got him. You know, in his in his life when he was alive, he did pretty good, and it and it lasted for quite a while. I guess the Federal Reserve banking that started when he started, because everything was built on credit and promissory notes and banks bank backing certain personalities in the public eye to accomplish certain tasks. You know, here's an eyeball piece of information. The cable cars and the trolleys of the cities back in the turn of the century, 1900, those worked better than public transportation does now because they didn't have cars. The street driving cars, road cars, motor vehicles. Before those existed, they had the horse and carriage and the trolleys, right? And... What I read was the tire companies wanted to remove the trolleys and put them on the road, put tires on cars. And these little ideas, these, you know, small people had once upon a time, they, uh, you can credit them for having foresight. No, oh, look at how well they thought ahead. Now, what I think they were doing, they were making the best use of the worst shit there was to make money. Instead of making something uh, out of hemp that would last 50 years, let's make it out of cotton. <laughs> then it'll be back 10 times in 50 years to replace it. And then to, uh, today, here's another thing. I read a little bit here, a little bit there on the Internet. I read that the, uh, the process of making the cotton blue for denim is a very water-wasteful pro process. So they're going to go to green, whatever that, I guess the color green, I didn't finish the, I was just picking and choosing a little here and there, but the idea of it, you know, instead of here we are 19, 19 years into the freaking 21st century and these idiots are still debating on what to use when instead of the approach, what would be best for everybody? Because that sounds like that communist anarchist bullshit that we don't want no part of. We want to have profit. <laughs> so there you go. And hmm. So capitalist or socialist, all that crap, it, it's all the freaking same. 
so somehow we've got taught to look at it like it's different. Why? You still got strangers telling you what to do with your personal fucking affairs based on stories you hear because you never do you know any of the people that represent you? <laughs> you ever have dinner with Donald fucking Trump? <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> and if you did, wow. Whoopty fucking doopty. Have you taken a good look at some of the people that surround the Trumpster? They kind of look like they're from the same family, if you know what I mean. Radio land people out there listening to me talk. <laughs> I'm just saying. The, the world that I see... I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be the same world everybody else is reporting back. <laughs> yeah, that's how I, you know, because uh, my my life is fine. I don't think I have any anything to complain about that's real. You know, I mean, I could complain about shit like, I don't like the color of the drapes, Cirque. I think you should make some new ones or uh, curtains or whatever the fuck in the window, right? So I could create a problem that I don't have you know, to tell somebody else what to do. <laughs> and and in, in reality, right, the way we look at reality, that would be a problem because here I am complaining about it. Well, there you go. Something must be done. Action must be taken. <laughs> no, it's just the Jew was bitching about the freaking curtains again. So, you know, so what? But it depends on, on who hears what. You get a, a certain reaction. Now, Rob has, you know, kind of helped me follow this road to the uh, vibration and the frequency. And Mary and Vincent, there's a lot of people. And Grimner in his own way, without directly, he doesn't really specifically approach that. But a lot of the topics, like when he does Grim Leftovers, and he has time to read specific links for specific reasons, <laughs> I, I get a kick out of that. And some of his links are freaking priceless. I think my favorite still has got to be baking soda now. Um, I seen one today on Minds.com about CBD curing cancer, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the uh, it's a patent. Somebody owns a patent to it. So there you go. Chemotherapy. <laughs> this is all, all of it. It's all about commerce. And commerce is all about, well, my theory didn't work. I thought it would work, but I was wrong. Anyway, so back to pontificating about what I think one more time. <laughs> but here's another thing I was thinking this the other day. Maybe war is really a guise to destroy man-made history. So, you know, in, if you think about right now, Go back a thousand years in history. What? Where is your proof of that thousand years ago? In a museum somewhere? <laughs> or are there still places where you can travel to and go step out of your plane and take a taxi to a building that's a thousand years old? Can you still do that? <clears throat> I've seen Trump do it and go suck on a wall a couple times. But I've never been there, so I'm taking their word that's what's going on. It could be another moon landing for all I know. Israel could just be a, a story that I hear. I've never been there. And uh, I don't think that the little bit of Jew crap you know, that goes with my paperwork would ever be enough to give, get me any standing in that country, by the way. But in the States, you know, I guess it would be enough for the Jews to help me out if I was financially in trouble, you know, because... You, that's the, what they do, you know. It's people in in tribes, uh, for some reason, tend to, to uh, take care of each other more willingly and without being expected to. They just do it. It's very weird. Uh, hmm. Anyway, I remember because growing up, a lot of the older Jewish people they always pay a lot of attention to me, considering I was so far out of their you know, religion thing, but they always liked me and said hello. And then we had the nose in common, the nose and the cut. Hey, hey, you can get a nose and a cut. You can join our gang, I'll tell you. 
Now, I just want to be on the side that wins in the end. I don't really give a shit which, which side it is. I don't even want to really be on a side, but you don't have a choice. See, that's what this is all about, I think. In the collective, you know. In the singular, shit, I don't give a flying fuck about none of it. I don't care if the Americans bomb Syria or not at some level. It's the humanity part, you know, it's that part of me that has, like, emotion attached to it. And then I go, wow, well, what, if, what if that was you? Holy shit, what if we were getting bombed in Denmark by America with drones? <laughs> you know, because uh, the Queen of Denmark was uh, gassing her own people. <laughs> so they're going to come and overthrow her and get rid of her for making her people suffer. And these kind of stories, I don't know, they, they tell them a different way is what it is. The way it, it vibrates to me is, sucker, don't do this. But the way it vibrates to somebody else is, it's fucking D-Day, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate a banker's fucking war that we weren't alive to see. <laughs> you know, and what? No, this is all the attention I've spent. I, I think I few I typed a few comments, little cracks about D Day, Day Day or whatever. I don't really care. It doesn't hold any uh, emotional value. It's just another statistic. But I'll tell you a statistic that it does interest me. Hmm. I might even read you good folks a link. Let's see. What have I? got my bag of tricks for your listening enjoyment tonight because uh hold on let me cough once here i'll be right back ah so much better because uh i know there's a lot of people on the site that are doing gardening in particular right and i'm not on the chat right now i've got my uh my document i want to read open so but uh, there's a few folks you know, that I would go to for advice on the RLM <laughs> if I had a, a gardening question. So, And then there's beginners like me. And uh, we've got all this modern technology. You can post pictures of what you're freaking growing in Denmark and show your friend in New Mexico on the Internet. It's freaking great. Now, I think I'll do that. I'll throw some pictures up on the wire. Maybe in the next week or so of the little bit of uh, gardening I'm doing out there with Circle. <laughs> we just got like six or seven plants we planted so far. But, you know, <laughs> those plants will yield a lot of um, vegetables and whatnot. Whatever she planted out of there. I forgot what it was. But it's still kind of, uh, it's like self-fulfilling, you know. Uh, not fulfilling. Man, what's the right way to put that? Hmm. I get a, a, a sense of satisfaction, I would say. That's a better way to explain it. From starting a plant and uh, going out there and keeping it watered and try to keep the, the birds from eating it all. And, you know, the weeds from attacking it. Because the plants are just attacked by everything. They live a whole life being attacked. <clears throat> that was, uh, I think that was the Norse god of loud going off in the sky there my dog is going insane hold on folks sorry about that it's all right here even the cats go but here on the chair we have lightning striking anyway i was going on a tirade about uh medical and uh then i went on the thing about the farming and this is what the huh, now the dog won't be quiet but it's called uh here, I'll put a copy of it. I keep forgetting to do that in the first place. Let me get a copy of and I'll post it for your reading perusal on the RLN main feed in the chat. There we go. And Hannah will not stop. She's poor thing suffering. Can you get her upstairs? I guess not. Okay, let me open up my story and you'll have a little barking in the background until she gets calmed down if you... Bear with me, folks. My, I'm not one of those people get mad at a dog for barking because it's, it's a dog. <laughs> what I didn't expect it to break out and do Shakespeare. You know, hey, it's, she's trying to tell me it's, it's 
coming. <laughs> anyway, court docs. Monsanto paid chemical industry front group to claim cancer-causing weed killers safe and attack its critics. Wow. I mean, and this is from the 29th of May, 2019, by a man named Bill Walker out of a global research. Okay. Now, this just accusing this company of doing it in print, that's some serious... Uh, I think that's some serious stuff. Talking about it on the internet, uh, I don't think really, you know, chitter-chattering back and forth, that that's one thing. But when you can get it in print like this and get the uh, get the truth out there, look at how few people get an opportunity to see it. It's not very good. I mean, uh, the, the amount of people is very small. That's what I be, mean by not very good. Anyway. <coughs> That was loud, Cirque. I know. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. We're, she's smiling and happy. It's just the dog got all crazy. All right. On with my epic tale about Monsanto. Monsanto paid a shadowy chemical, com, chemical industry front group to help push back against the mounting scientific evidence that the company's signature Roundup weed killer causes cancer. Court documents reveal. You know, like, uh, read it. What? You're going to always go back to this part of the, you do the crime first in the first place. So, all this legal beagle, this is just a, it's, it's avoidable if they would just not have to work so hard to fuck us uh, to earn a dollar. Well, maybe we wouldn't be in this mess we're in. <laughs> anyway, back to my tale of Monsanto. <clears throat> if a company like Monsanto won't support us, then who will? The head of the American Council on Science and Health wrote to a Monsanto scientist in 2015. A day later came the reply. The answer is yes, definitely count us in. Emails between Monsanto and the American Council on Science and Healthcare, or ACSH, and related internal Monsanto emails were first made public during the trial last July of a lawsuit by a former California school groundskeeper who was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma after using Roundup. I don't think he was supposed to put it in his coffee. The jury awarded Dwayne Lee Johnson $289 million in punitive and compensatory damages, later reduced by the judge to $78 million. Million with an M. Million. Hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I don't believe that, that this happened. I'm not that, that crazy yet. But I'm just saying that I'd rather have the life than the money. So, by some freaking um, streak of freaking luck, I can't even explain. I've been able to avoid the bulk of all that stuff. Been a, haven't been a, around growing things till I got here. And they don't use, well, Cirque knows better. So the people that do use it, I haven't seen it in my neighborhood, but I've seen it down at the grocery store one time about a, two years ago. Somebody bought some. So the poison's in the, you know, it's in the atmosphere. How much of it do you need to destroy your shit? I don't know. But not using any is the best I can do, you know. And other people, <laughs> they don't read the details. Back to my epic tale about Monsanto. The internal Mons Monsanto slash ACSH emails reappeared as evidence in the most recent lawsuit to go before a court. Brought by a California couple who were both diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma after decades of using the herbicide. In May, the jury ordered Bayer Monsanto to pay Alva and Alberta Piod more than two billion in damages. Billion with a B, like Mary says. 
just in case it sounds like million in and I didn't say it correctly because you no, know, I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> My details must be accurate. <laughs> it was the third verdict in less than a year in which juries found that glyphosate, the key ingredient in Roundup, causes cancer and that Monsanto covered up evidence of its health risk for decades. Last year, Bear bought Monsanto for 63 billion dollars and is now facing tens of thousands of similar lawsuits <laughs> uh, the emails here and here whatever that is show that in February 2015 Monsanto was working with ACSH to prepare for the expected fallout from a, re a pending report on the safety of glyphosate by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC. Hmm. The following month, the IARC, part of the World Health Organization, would release a report that classified glyphosate as probably carcinogenic to humans. <laughs> okay, there's, uh, there's letters. Uh, that's enough of that. That was fun. I, I had a giggle doing that, kind of in a way because uh serious i mean wow where do you where do you play a part in any of all this global crap you know because i've read enough to be afraid of just about everything there is to be afraid of i should be like uh terrified all the time shaking in my boots you know sitting in a corner of the room with a you know with a stuffed animal on my fucking thumb in my mouth crying that's the, you know, that's what I see. Oh, this, everything is fucking the exact opposite. Oh, good, Moose, because uh, I, I just, dogs, man, they bark. I don't know. Doesn't bother me either. They're, I don't, it, they're annoying and other people get it. Hey, keep your dog, shut your dog up. Mm. Me, I say let the dog bark. Fucking care. Dog ain't gonna tell me to shut up. <laughs> and maybe it does. Maybe that's what the dog's doing. You know, knows I'm thinking something and it's barking at me to don't say that. Shut up, Lou. Be quiet. <laughs> and hey, do you people remember when people had an immune system in the first place? You know, there's a little known uh, topic right there. Is the damage done to us publicly, right, through advertising gimmicks to sell second-rate shit that was legally not going to kill you, but it, if you take it for a long enough period of time, what it will do is maybe some irreparable damage to parts of you that you would want to keep intact. <laughs> like, re remember the, mar what is it, um, fake butter, whatever, margarine, right? Not margarine. I guess they, they called it margarine. One of you brainiac cooks out there in RLM can uh, correct me on this one. But, uh, I use butter, 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 butter. I like butter, you know. I'm not big on food. I'm, I'm very limited in my uh, desire to eat. You know, I'm not, I'm not always hungry. Sometimes it's very strange to be around people. You know, when I go out, they're all eating and munching on shit, and I don't even feel, uh, I don't even feel the necessity to go buy something because, hey, they're eating, so. Some part of me doesn't go along with society and all its trappings. If I want something, it's me that wants it. It ain't because somebody decided I wanted it <laughs> for me. It's very, uh, I think it's a unique stand. I, I don't see a lot, of, a lot of other people capable of walking to the grocery store with a list. And even one out of ten times come back with only what's on the list because we're all excessive <laughs> some people are anal enough to follow a list verbatim but i think for most of us uh, the anarchist minded ones of us we ad lib and uh, uh replace things that if you can't find this then that'll do you know um whatever what do you, how would you explain that? Well, that's, I'm talking to myself out loud here, folks. 
Just so you know, I'm aware of it. So that can't be a sign of insanity, just weirdness. <laughs> and uh, Vinny's back playing with words. My wife, and, uh, Miss Kate, Moose Girl, and Anti, and they're chitter-chattering on the feed in the afternoon today. Because this is a quiet time of day. You know, people that have jobs are working. And some people that just have the uh, site on, just read and chat, don't have anything in particular to post or to chat or about. I do that myself sometimes, folks, just in case you didn't know. I just read. And, uh, and unless somebody's specifically asking me something, and, yeah, very rare. Uh, I am, I'm not an expert on shit. If I was an expert, I, I knew stuff, and I could promise you the world, I'll, I'll bet. I'll bet you would all be my disciples and join my cult. <laughs> but no, I'm just like everybody else. It's very depressing to think about that part. Is that the, you know, the life that I'm looking at is the life I want to see. So if I'm bummed out or pissed off, whoa, must be me doing it somehow. And how do you explain that to another person without ending up into an argument? Because the person that you're talking to will start getting defensive thinking it's about them, not the idea. <laughs> we're not taught to think in ideas. We're taught to think in person. You know? And all that shit behind that person, what color you are, what country you're from. Are you mutt blood? Huh? You got a circumcision on your wiener. Are you an Arab? You know, Because there's certain, certain races you don't have to ask. You kind of look at them and you know. Made it real easy. They didn't need a manual or anything. Still, you know, people got to treat them like they're special for some reason. I don't know. I don't do that. Oh, mm. uh, Grimner says, I don't use a written list to go grocery shopping, but I do tend to buy the same food every time. If the go grocery store moves stuff around, it fucks me all up. Me too. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying earlier. I had to ask one of the... One of the people that was standing around, hey, would you help me with this? And it was written in Danish in the first place. And she knew, and she spoke English. But just the willingness to be helpful and, you know, uh, to not be, in, hey, don't bother me. I'm shopping. Leave me alone. Anybody I've ever asked for help in this damn store. And sometimes they'll, they'll go the extra mile and take me. Oh, I know right where that's at. And they got to walk halfway across the other side of the store to do it. And it's not a great big store. This is a small, compared to a, like Walmart or something. This is not, no. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Wow. Boy, the coughing and the bad voice tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 20% off this evening. <laughs> is travel... Oh. Is traveling today is fun and exciting for all of you out there that still engage. I don't think the RLM crew, you know, the people I'm chatting with, I don't think many of them travel much. Uh, airlines travel, you know, international, all that kind. I don't do that anymore. I did it, I, and I didn't do it a lot. I did it over a period of years, a few times, you know, and uh, and it was like flipping a coin or something. I don't know. The plane landed, and I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. I got off the plane and got back on one yet. And don't have any intention of doing anything like that. And I'm just amazed on, you know, the life that I read on the internet is so, uh, hmm, confining and uh, regulated. And you have to do this and you have to do that and blah, 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 blah. And I live in this place where there's everything from public drinking where it's accepted by the society that's the way these people are they're going to do this just leave them alone to do it and everybody gets along just freaking fine uh, i could go to this to the store and get a beer and join them if i if i please to and i don't know if i guess they maybe they take it as rude or if i don't but i'm usually carrying home you know milk and whatnot and don't have time so maybe during the summertime i'll just stop and have a beer with the local people and let them know I'm part of the thing. I'm just, you know, I'm happy with my wife at the house. I, I don't really, I don't find it necessary to associate, but I'm not too good to do it. So I'm like on this fine line with uh, society here. You got to, got to 
to be able to bend and, and do what what fits, I think, is what I'm trying to look for. And what what problems I'll have in society would be the friction. You know, that's when their idea and my idea are different and they try to occupy the same place at the exact same time. And that's when people don't get along. You know, they, you have your, your idea coming in from this side and they got their idea coming in from the opposite side. Like me and Vinny when we start talking about certain topics. And he's on this side and I'm on that side and then we collide. And then the voice levels go up, and we start yelling. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! I ain't done yet. Nah, let me finish. <laughs> and it, it's just to, to get along that openly with somebody on a radio program, and not, uh, and not let the negative side control the, the, the chatter. I don't know what uh, the entire thing really. Uh, I think me and me and Vinny got beyond getting seriously angered, angered at each other. But I think if you don't get there first, then you got nothing to conquer. <laughs> so some people, you know, I'm combative with some people. Like Grimner, I'm not combative with. He don't give a fuck about what anybody fucking says. So there's there's no combating with Grimner. Uh, Cowboy Tech, he doesn't ever say a bad word, so I never give him a bad word. You know, uh, I just, uh, how I've explained it to Cirque when we've discussed this particular detail, I think whatever you're seeing in me is just uh it's the mirror image of what i see in you that's my side of it but i don't know if other people take it to that level of thinking and, and identify it at that go to these details but i do i take a lot of, i tend some things scan right the fuck over don't give two shits about it like if we're on a spinning globe traveling through space and all that crap maybe we are maybe we're not if it matters, it doesn't matter to me, but it matters a great deal <laughs> to a lot of other people. And and I'm, uh, I think my sick side, I use it on Cirque every once in a blue moon just to watch her eyes roll, because uh, educated people been educated by education, you know. And these are the standards, and these are the answers, and this is the way things fucking are, motherfucker. <laughs> I went to school and learned that. Don't don't tell me no. <laughs> and that's what education does. What open mindedness is is when you go, whatever floats your bubble, baby. I don't give a shit. But that's not what we're taught as a collective. That's my opinion as a, you know, carbon based life form with a voice, <laughs> with the ability to speak and a little electricity. This is what I can do. <laughs> And I don't, I don't think I'm any different than anybody else. But when I read type on the, the chat rooms, I do. I see lots of differences. But when I'm talking about us on this planet or this, this rock or whatever the fuck you call it, Earth, it don't matter to me. But whatever it is, it's whatever I want it to be, not what you tell me it is. And I would assume... That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's like being at a party, you know, and we're all there, but and it's a big group, but we ain't got fuck all to do with each other. This is about the group. You know? The group has uh, no no voice. The group has <laughs> like a physical life to itself. And here we are in the Internet where the group has a freaking voice instead of being a mob that can be shifted by you know physical momentum here in the chat world we do it with words and ideas laws and restrictions regulation i know a better way <laughs> new and improved and uh, oh the boys are fighting about duck season or rabbit season i grew up on those cartoons too i felt like doing a odd little bits of trivia through the show tonight and I read a story before the internet uh, I was a newspaper reader uh, magazines books and for years and years and I pretty much slowed down over my life but uh, I like to read a lot at a point now not so much but <laughs> what I was getting at is uh, and then I lost I lost the thing because uh, I was stalling for something else so I think I'm going to go see if I can't find me a, a link to read. 
I'm getting a giggle out of these links too. But uh, most of the stuff I want, I like to watch uh, videos now. Man, and these some of these people that speak about the shit they speak about, they know what they're saying. They're not talking out their their neck. And the people that are talking out their neck are the ones that get the bulk of the attention. Like, <laughs> Trump went to England, right? What the fuck? Oh, hey, sir. Oh, hold on one second. Thank you for your patience there, folks. I was begging the queen for a little help here at the radio table. Um, my hands are tied without a, a radio partner. And I don't always have the ability to, to think ahead. Sometimes I just kind of do things at the sperm of the moment. You know, how, however it hits me to do it. You know, without really giving it any great thought. So, yeah, flash mob mania. <clears throat> wow. Rob Works says he's having trouble on the internet. His, his browser won't open anything. Uh, I've been reading about internet sh uh, letdowns on the Minds site. There's been a few people, you know, a few small. Let me open up Minds and maybe there's something handy on there about it. But there's been a uh, periods of time where the electricity's been down in certain areas. Periods of time where the uh, certain services to the internet were disabled. I think I was a way to put it. Might not have disabled right, but uh, let's see. Oh, well, I'll just uh, keep that in the back burner. But, I don't know. Tonight I was on about the inoculation stuff. And I'm just so um, confused, you know, how here we are. Intelligent freaking people. I mean, you got to admit that for the overall. Uh, we're smart enough to live in, you know, the 21st century and make use of the tools available. So how can people be so blindsided, you know, by the man-made laws that are just bo basically commerce and bullshit and control and, and lies? The more you look, the more you find out, hey, you know what? They lied. <laughs> this isn't true. Oh, that's not true either. Blah, blah. And it just goes on and on. There's not like a great big list of success stories. It's all these, uh, all these problems. Hmm. And somebody on the RLM chat has had a little hiccup, and the chatters are right there to try to back him up, get him some help with his matter. And I'm stalling, looking for a certain note. I, was, I write little ideas down, you know, for topics to chatter about, and I seem to have misplaced what I was looking for. <laughs> ah, no, this will do it, because... uh. I'm looking for ways, you know, to break the bonds of uh, collective thinking. Uh, and that might be a way to put it because although me and Grimner, let's use Grim as a good example because me and Grim play trivia on Sundays and he's really fast at the typing. Not only is he really fast at the typing and uh, he watches damn Jeopardy religiously. I posted the thing the other day about Alex Trebek got cured of his cancer miraculously. Thought you'd like to know that. I don't know. Maybe you don't. But, uh, hmm. So I threw that at the RLM and it didn't seem to impress anyone. I get felt so ignored by that because I thought Alex Trebek was everybody's friend and it would make everybody want to talk to me about it, but nobody did. <laughs> ah, isn't that funny? No? Okay. Maybe it's not. Maybe I just think it's a little funny. Hmm. Oh, no. This is uh, some of the stuff that... Uh, wow. Oh, did you know that there's a contest? Ah, oh, bless you, sir. There, I got the elixir from the wife. Always good to me when I need her. Uh, anyway, that was uh, unexpected, too. So, uh, how long can you live without a constitution? I think the record so far is it's been since 1860 that the United States has had a constitution. Now, people don't seem to agree with me on this concept. Rob, I believe, does. Rob Works, I know, does. Uh, Grimner, I believe, does. I, 
I don't know if I can't, you know, specifically, you know, Vinny. Okay, Vinny too. I didn't see any. I don't know how well enough to make a call, and I don't know, Miss Kate, or hmm, it's hard to say what other people, you know, how they how they feel about it. But there's a, a constitution-free zone and borders the United States for 100 miles. I have read. Now, it wasn't there when I was there, I don't think. Well, it, might have, it might have been, but uh, I don't know enforcement. I did tra you know, I traveled a, a little bit between 2001 and uh, 2011 in the States. So there's 10 years of some kind of traveling around sporadically. It wasn't, you know, every day or every year, every month, but it was at least every year I would go somewhere for a short period of time to get a break from where I was. And uh, I read since those days that, well, the Constitution's been gone since Abraham Lincoln was uh, in the White House as the president. And he, uh, what happened, this is according to what I've read, I can post links all day and all night. And if you've not heard or read something similar to this by this point in your, uh, I don't know, in your entertainment on the Real Liberty Media or any affiliate to it, then who, you missed a class. But uh, he put us under martial law, us being Americans at the time alive in America during the Civil War, 1860. America was under civil, uh, what, that's uh I lost it. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, martial law. Thank you. Oh, I had a brain fart there, folks. That little bit of marijuana just seemed to make me a complete fool tonight. Hold on. Let me cough this one second, folks. Now nah, the tea's still a little too hot. And we we're sharing all my personal business on the reallibertymedia.com tonight at 20% uh, off because I felt Jewish. But, yeah, we've lived without a constitution since 1860. But that's not what we were taught. And this is why I say everything I was ever freaking taught, it was either based on a bullshit story or it was a total fucking lie. And here we sit in a world where, in California, they've just <laughs> they just made a law according to the Internet world I follow. Mandatory of vac mandatory vaccinations, and wow, <laughs> see this pushes my freedom button at a level that most folks probably don't even consider. I don't think. I think Grim does and Rob would, uh, Vinny would, but I don't know. Anti, I don't know anti well enough to make the judgment call on what you would do about, uh, you know, this Constitution thing. But it's if they're gonna start coming and making shit mandatory, I I think you guys would say something or do something. I don't think you would sit there and take it. But you know, push hasn't come to shove where you're at yet. But it, if it starts, it usually catches on. And here we are with all the freaking knowledge at the, our fingertips and such a small amount of people that are intelligent enough to look at the opposition. And figure out what the truth is without being told what the truth is. I don't believe I, when I'm telling you my side of the inoculation principle, period, I don't think I'm trying to, to persuade you of anything. If you think sticking a needle of, uh, you know, duck cum in your veins is going to make you a better person, my hat's off too. You go out and fucking shoot it up because. In my sick mind, I think that that's just more room for me when you're gone because you're crazy enough to uh, experiment on yourself with shit that whole, nobody knows what's going what's gonna to be. You, I mean, there's a wake of death behind this stuff that goes back about 100 years, give or take, you know, where it's documented and you can prove this shit. So they created cancer. <laughs> These people are brilliant. This uh, Rockefeller group created these things. And then they found ways to not only not ever cure you of it, but it's it's a trap. 
<laughs> it's a death sentence. And we find out about baking soda. Guess who, you know, guess who goes, hey, you know what? Baking soda cures cancer. You better not tell anybody that. The FDA will come kick your ass. Because it's illegal in an, uh, the world, I guess. I don't, see, freedom of speech is, is really, we really have it. Because you could do the crime before anybody arrests you for doing anything. You've still done it. Whatever it is. So if, if speaking about there's being a cure for an illness is illegal, I sure like to know why and who goes along with all that kind of crap. And if that's my opposition, I'm not going to win. There's no way to win that. I'm going to I'm going to be in big trouble. So I look at my surroundings and I don't feel threatened like uh, if I don't see things this particular way and agree with this, 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 and this, then I'm going to suffer these results. I'm not treated that way. I was treated that way at home. I remember that because if you don't do this, then we're going to lock your happy ass up and make you. Or we'll take your property away from you and put you on the street for not paying a tax. So hmm, there's physical punishment for a mental idea. Isn't that interesting? No, that's normal. That's what everybody's okay with. That's what I'm not. <laughs> I'm not okay with that shit. I think if you just raise people not to do these things instead of raising them to do these things, these things wouldn't happen. <laughs> and I don't get very much support with that side of thinking because it's probably a little bit obscure. But uh, the state has made it virtually impossible for two people to... Uh, raise kids the way I was raised where one parent worked and the other one didn't have to because they didn't need him to you know didn't there was no no help was going to come of my mom getting a a labor job and then who was going to watch me see so in my day it was like hey it wasn't sexist or demeaning or disgusting or embarrassing to raise a kid he did that that's what t people did and over my lifetime I watched them turn uh, the genders into equals. <laughs> yeah, right. Equal my fucking ass. There's things that my wife can do that I don't even want to do. Okay? And there's things that I can do that my wife cannot do. Or vice versa. Would not even want to think about doing them. I'll give you a strange example today. I, I wanted to bring this bookcase down from upstairs to the downstairs. Bookcase kind of a thing. About six foot long. But I didn't want to be taking it apart and doing it in pieces. I wanted to do it all at one time. So, you know, with the help of balance and gravity and a little thinking, I managed to save myself a couple of, you know, maybe an hour of taking things apart and then running up and down the stairs back and forth with it. So my laziness made me, you know, get creative. But I don't think Cirque would ever figure out how to do that in the first place. She's not built for that kind of thing physically. She's female. And then on top of it, you know, that's... Uh, then again, there's things that she's good at that I can't do. Like, the, well, cooking isn't so much a gender thing. And I'm not so much saying like that. The job is genderfied. I'm just saying that there's certain tasks that one gender is uh, prone to be better at than the other. For it depends on the couple too. You know which things, how they compare. You know, because like a uh, Cirque doesn't use measurements and stuff like that to cook. She just gets in there and starts throwing shit together, <laughs> eyeballs, and just figures out this much that and that much this and. You start cooking this stuff at this time, and then you wait, and then you put this in, and I can't do all that. That stuff just drives me to the brink of insanity, all that uh, detail. Uh, turn it on. <laughs> turn it off. But what I found out through the modern technology and the Internet was microwaves are freaking, they're killing you. Don't use them. Fucking bad for you. The results you get from what you use it to do are 
bad for you. So my brain is pretty simple. I went, oh, okay, I'll stop doing that. So now I have to drink hot coffee boiled out of a kettle or off the burner, but not the microwave. So it's what it's a step, you know, in the in a better direction for me. And I don't think that. <laughs> the, the people I mention it to are ever going to going to change their mind about what they're doing about nothing until they need a reason to or say hey, I'm having problems with this. Well, that's what problems are for. So you know it's time to to do something about that. <laughs> problems aren't uh, they're not a punishment. It's like bumping your toe in, into the table. That that's a warning sign. So you check your foot, make sure you don't break anything. Because if you didn't know you kicked that table and you broke it, you'd be a big shit. So with every uh, with every pain comes a really good lesson, I suppose. I think so. But other people, I, they seem victimized. You know, um, I don't know. Uh, I guess if if you take the they own my documents and I'm bound to this freaking house and uh, this that and the other and I'm married and all this shit and if you take it to freaking heart where uh, it consumes you in some kind of where you're constantly aware of it all the time I guess that would be a problem you know me I think about it when I'm on the radio because it's a topic you know that's got so many feet to it you can go a million directions with uh you know, my little life in Denmark. And then I'm reading about the internet, you know, on the internet about home. Jeez. Mm, it's just been really bad. I was starting to rant about Donald fucking Trump goes to England for whatever. So these billionaire motherfucking snooty cunts can lick each other's balls in a, you know, golden room or whatever fucking weird shit they do. And the public sucks it up like it's cool. They've got people for him and they got people against him and I don't give a flying fuck <laughs> one way about him or the other but the politics that they're not talking about you know what are they doing they're not talking about that they're distracting you with all this glitz and freaking queen of england bullshit you're looking at that they're fucking writing some new law <laughs> they're going to surprise you because they know what's good for you people because you people are too ignorant to do it for yourself. And that's government. If you think I'm just being a smart ass or I'm being rude. No, they, they've got it in writing. Do some reading. Do some research out there. If you don't, if you've never heard any of this shit before, if this is your first time, <laughs> good luck. But uh, it's all out there in print for the, you know, hesitant, I would suppose. Some people could read the things that I read, that I believe, and still argue them with me because, well, their mind will not accept whatever this is as true. And, uh, okay, well, here, well, I'm going to go back to the chat here. Vinny says, we have gone from martial law to extrajudicial. That's, okay, Vinny, that's you adding, you know, or interpreting. It's still martial fucking law, pal. That is why the the military went door to door in Boston, because they had every right to do that. That's why nobody challenged it. There was not one lawsuit because it wouldn't have stood up in court. No court would touch it. You could take that to SCOTUS, maybe SCOTUS would, but you're under martial fucking law. So where does SCOTUS come in? It doesn't. It's an illusion. We're just, <laughs> for the billionth time on one of my programs, I do do a little bit of chitter-chatter on the radio. But, uh, wow, we're all being had equally. It's not like I'm getting screwed any freaking less than you are. This is the, what I realize as being screwed is more the delivery of the electric. That part just rubs me raw, pierces me off in ways I can't explain. And uh, <clears throat> pursuit in life right now. It's minimal, so it, the comfort level is good. I'm not suffering from anything, and I'm not physically feeling any uh, negative reactions to whatever I'm being exposed to. But what I do know from experience is once I've taken the advice of the people that 
knew from experience and followed their path, I found what I was looking for. So, you know, a little additive in my water with this, a little additive in my water with that. Throw that in my uh, porridge. And you don't even taste whatever, you know, it is that you don't want to take a shot of. You just put it in your food and eat it. Same result, but without the taste. So, hmm. And I'm specifically talking about rosehip. And uh, I use turmeric, but uh, Cirque doesn't cook with it. I had to get her to cook with it, use it as a, what is that, curry or something. Because it's a curry. And she likes curry, but she doesn't use my curry for it. She, <laughs> she uses other stuff. But that, see, I was kind of leaning towards that open-mindedness thing. Because uh, it's easy to say that we're, oh, I'm open-minded. And there's sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. There are some things you couldn't. Just like the voter, there's just some topics that you can talk to me until you run out of words, and I'm still not going to agree with you because my indoctrination to believe what I believe is too strong to be convinced that the mob knows better than I know. Uh uh. Oh no, but look, these PhDs have all decided. I don't give a flying fuck. Look at all the destruction from all these PhDs agreeing has come to so far. The worst thing that can happen is that these freaking idiots can agree and they get some freaking Jew newspaper to write about their agreement and it's all bullshit. When you find out what the truth is 50 years later, you go, hey, wait a minute, they were lying. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to wait 50 years to call them liars. I'm not going to wait 50 years to prove they're lying either. It's something you know. It's a personal, subjective thing. You can't convince somebody else that a government entity or activity is a, a certain thing. They're, they see it their way. And then there's that, uh, what do you call it, fear of uh, looking a certain way in public. You know, some people are patriotic for the fear of treason. Because if you were to talk... Um, badly about President Trump like I do because I don't have any respect for President Trump. That is treasonous. People believe this shit. Words. Because you don't like the guy and you openly speak about it. That's treasonous. Okay. Well, but they outlawed dueling. So, eh, treasonous, schmeasonous. Anyway. Oh, not me. How? This is back to Vinny. Martial law give your rights under occupation. Extra do judicial is a kill or capture at will effect without legal recourse. Oh, so like uh, Waco, where uh, they actually attack you, and when you defend yourself, that's, <laughs> see what they made us do? <laughs> and the public says, kill them, kill them all, bomb them. Blow them into smithereenies into a million, you know, fuck. Where does that come from in us? You know, what, what happened to people? Are you like that? <laughs> Jeez, I'm not. I don't, I don't wish bad things on people I don't like. What I do wish on people that I don't get along with or just say, we'll use the word don't get along with because I don't dislike. Just the behavior sucks. So I go, eh. And that's pretty much it. You know, just... It doesn't really amount to much. But each of us doing it all at the same time makes a vibration. So we've got all these invisible things going on all around us, right? And no school to go to. Then nobody's ever directed me to the school of vibration. <laughs> I wish I had been led down that road in a, in a sense. I, I guess I feel like I was left out of that somehow is what I mean. I didn't trip over it, find out about it in a, in a time where information was so accessible. Because I tripped over Tesla in 87, I think. I think it was 87. Might have been 88. But anyway, right in that, that two-year period. And, but we were in VHS tape. And we didn't have the internet back in those days. So uh, had I per been able to pursue that then in a... I probably could have done libraries or something, but I didn't. And even if I had, I would still be in the same position I'm in with the knowledge now because who listens to what I know about 
Tesla. So we're all doing, you know, that's the whole point. You know, I'm doing this. I'm doing it for myself. I don't want to make a point to the world. You know, uh, make some statements. People are very disagreeable about the things that I think are so simple. We could fix this whole fucking world in a day. Wouldn't take but a couple hours. And all you got to do is stop lying. Everything else falls right into place. And then at the end of that, then you go, hey, you know what? Let's get high and make some cookies. Okay, who's got some hemp? <laughs> but it's not even hemp. It's cannabis. But you know, there's people out there that really still to this day because of the indoctrination are so confused and, and convinced that weed is evil. <laughs> and the government did such a brilliant freaking job. Let's make it just like with alcohol. Only the difference between weed and alcohol is alcohol kills. Weed doesn't. Weed is at least a decent thing to use. Alcohol, no. Uh, I, don't, I don't recommend alcohol to people. And I drink occasionally, and I go and have me a beer or two or four or six. But, eh, that's about enough. You know, and at, at that point... What more do I need it for? So I'm go home. Eh. So, weed? Hmm. But what these freaking guys, these people are that we call stupid, the ones in power, they're brilliant. They fuck all of us equally, and then they get us to argue amongst our own about what we created by letting them do it. But we don't know that. Because collectively, we live in governments, and uh, governments have, you know, what do you call them, constitutions and bills of rights. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, what What if you're like me, and, and you don't really want any of these governments to grant you any fucking thing? You know? What about that? And I know people go, well, well, you could get hurt. No, well, maybe I could. Then throw me in a fucking hole and put dirt on top of it, and then that's done. But I don't think that's how my life is. My life is, wow. I'm doing whatever I'm doing because it's happening. I don't give it a, uh, a purpose. I don't give a fuck about any of that. What is your purpose in life? Uh, I don't have a purpose in life. I'm just alive. And oddly enough, even the married or not, I still, I do whatever I freaking please when I freaking want to do it. I'm just uh, uh, agreeable, you know. Uh, hmm. I compromise with Cirque. I don't give in to anybody or none of that. It's not me, but talking with people is so easy. You just go, hey, I want to do this. And then you go, no. And they go, okay, well, then you go, fuck off. <laughs> I'll do it without you. And uh, that's not really the. It's pretty much the, still the end result. It's just done nicer instead of. Uh, I don't believe in force. Force pe people when you force them to do things, even if you win, you're gonna be sorry someday, somehow. Uh, and people call it all kinds of things. Karma. I call it balance, but karma, uh, payback, God. Uh, Hmm. plenty of ways to describe uh, th the results being the results you put out or the results you receive. And, you know, like when, when uh, Grimm was teasing me about, whoa, what did Cirque ever do to deserve you? <laughs> and, and I could take that as a joke. I don't, I don't, t I don't think he meant it seriously. Like uh, other people, I would think they, they would mean something like that. But, you know, my friends, people I'm friendly with, nah. Uh, now, what, what's the difference? It's the same freaking words. So, how are they delivered differently? Must be what Rob was pointing me to is the wavelengths are different. Hmm. The way you read something is still delivered on a wavelength. There's something more behind what went into it than I'm capable of looking at and recognizing. Click, you know, it's all done so quickly. My mind just goes boom. But then it's done all these things that I'm not aware of being, you know, having been done. But they're there if you look for them. And 
we can find whatever we fucking want. That's <laughs> I think that's the core of 20% off for the dork table or in a perfect world. Uh, whatever you want in life, that's what you got. You got exactly what you want right now. And if your mind is thinking about doing or acquiring, then go do it. And sometimes for some people, talking about it is, uh, that's the, the catalyst. But they can do it for a long time before they get the, uh, the uh, I don't think it's courage. It, maybe it is. It could be a lot of things, but some kind of spark, you know, that makes you feel motivated to go do your task, whatever your task is. And I'm not talking about your freaking job and all that crap. I'm talking about the the thing that that each of us that wants to do something, and it's different at any particular time, but some days for me, I, I'm motivated to go out and give the yard a, a, a mow, you know, and make it, because Cirque likes it mowed. I like it over uh, overgrown and, and lived in, and she doesn't. So I have to compromise, but she lets me grow it. And you know, if I don't let it go too far, but then I go out there and it gives me a sense of satisfaction, you know, to do something for somebody else, I think is in the long run. And, uh, I don't think I'm like that with, uh, just Cirque. I think I'm like that in real, um, physical reality. I, I think the encounters, uh, that I have with people are, are all intended to be, you know, coordinated in a decent fashion where everybody gets along okay and nothing seriously wrong happens. And if, you know, accidents do happen, instead of blaming and freaking punishing, you fix the problem. That was uh, what me and Vinny went through on the uh, In a Perfect World was having a problem and then fixing the fucking problem. And there you go. And it's a decision you make. It's, it's not like the problem's real problem is all in my mind or his mind or nobody's mind but it's made up you know it's uh whatever you want it to be at the moment you're in is what you got <laughs> it's all yours to be whatever and i don't think we're encouraged to look at it that in you know in a light that matters like uh oh this crap lately with this gay shit fucking people man I think the statistics are like 2% of the American public is freaking gay. So they're going to start marketing everything towards that group of people. What? Why? How? Do, see, the opposite works on the sheep. Not They do what they're freaking told in ways that, for some reason, either I don't comprehend it enough to see what the alert to it. I just... It looks like somebody throws shit on a wall to me. That's what advertising looks like. I guess it's the sales background because the days that I came from, if you wanted repeat business with people, you had to tell them the truth and come through with your promises. Because if you were a fly-by-night and you tried to sell somebody something that wasn't what you told them it was, well, there was ways to protect the buyer from that. You prepay the freight and add it to the bill. I mean, if you're that cheap of a uh, salesman that you even wanted to make the freight as a uh, compensation. Sometimes I wasn't that greedy. I'd take the 15% and let them use 5% for freight. It didn't matter to me. But in a competitive world, I found that I wasn't going to go very far. I wasn't ever going to be a room manager. But I've had times where I could out out ship, not out sell, but out ship, out perform the guy that ran the room solo. But I didn't have the motivation, you know, that want, desire to be in charge and tell other people what to do. That that's that side of my uh, business life never took root. I feel very fortunate for that. It could be uh, hmm. I look at the life of hippie dumb and you know, smoking weed and shit like this that I've lived as a blessing compared to a, a life of servitude. You know, like my dad. My father wasn't as a happy person as me, but he didn't have as happy a life as I had. <laughs> so, but, you know, each person does what they're indoctrinated, I suppose, to do. 
and nobody could indoctrinate me. They tried every freaking thing. I wasn't going to do it just because you said so. And still, to this, there's Rob works the same fucking way. I, tell him Rob works to do something. He'll tell you, "Fuck you, go, you go do it. You do it, and you show me your results, and then I'll think about doing it." But <laughs> tell me to do something blind. <laughs> There's not too many people that are that gullible. I guess there are people that, but they're not hanging around with us. Oh man, we don't, we can't control the RLM. It's, it's like Mary says, it's like herding cats. It's a mind over matter type of deal. Well, I don't know, Vinny. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's neither. Maybe we're convinced of shit that's really not true. Because uh, if you simplify, you know, simplify. <laughs> I'm talking like a. If you simplify life, you know, just make things real easy and simple, and then I don't know. The it, the outside world doesn't corrupt you so easily. The more outside shit you have coming in, the more chance it has of fucking you, and. uh the more you can keep out, I guess you can survive it. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, hippie dumb. That's it, Grim. That's right. Because you know, you can only insult something when it's wrong. You know, that, that's the whole point. If you think making fun of a hippie is uh, some kind of insult, no, that that just shows me what you are. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, don't take it to heart, Grim. It don't matter. Fuck the the established order is the ones that want forced inoculations and tariffs. These people are idiots. They they'll strangle you to survive. They don't give a fuck about you at all. They just talk a big fucking game. And they've been trying to go to war with Iran for 50, 60 years now. Can, can never get the Iranians to fucking take it. The, but Russia's always been behind it. Soviet Union, Russia, whatever you call it now. I guess it's Russia now. Um, they, if Iran gets into a situation, the Russians are going to be on their side. They've got some kind of pact, according to my reading. Now, like I tell you guys all the time, it's all bullshit. And this says all these things are subject to change at any given freaking moment. I mean, Christ, all this crap about Iran when nobody knows has ever been allowed to go into Israel and look at their damn uh, nuclear arsenal. <laughs> they don't have a nuclear arsenal. <laughs> oh, no, but we're, they're not going to let Iran get a nuclear arsenal, but they've got one. Hmm. And again... Just the conversation about that can't be proven one way or the other. And they have it or they don't. Well, they won't let inspectors in to document, and photograph, and show us. So back to that threat. You have the threat. And when you have a bitch like the USA with warships and aircraft and all this other crap, <laughs> people are going to listen when you roar. There's, there's the truth to that. Oh, let's see. Uh, that's right, because it don't fucking matter. If you think it matters, you got problems. Mm. Let's see what Grimm says. Being natural is far more evolutionary than living in the fake world of the establishment assholes. Well, what exactly is... How do you define... I define it differently than a lot of people. So, I would say, you know, the... Sucking on the Jew cock thing in front of everybody is that's beyond embarrassing. I would I would be ashamed of myself if I was supporting a group of people so so obviously freaking in the wrong. <laughs> but you know, like a good little sheep, be that back there with my little flag and my red hat, you know, my on the good side of God and all that crap these idiots spew. While you run around murdering strangers for fucking oil. Oil and gold and dope. Create a freaking uh, dope epidemic by controlling the freaking dope market. 
blame it on the people. You know, whatever we have made um, a, available to us. I had lost the word for a second there, folks. But you know, what is in your available sphere? What are you capable of acquiring? Because they make it sound like every street corner you can just walk up to a freaking stranger and go score some heroin. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what you think, but that's not how reality works. Because uh, society, you're going to obviously recognize what part of the town you're in by the people you're looking at. And if you're not seeing suits and ties, and you are seeing jeans and needles, then you're probably in Heroinville. And uh, if you're seeing suits and ties, then you're probably in Commerceville. What's the big fucking problem? Where, where does all this matter in the first place? And in the second place, it's all concentrated. It's not like the police don't know. The police make all this shit happen. <laughs> And then they sell advertising to adults. Advertising and insurance and uh, what else do we got? Home loans so you don't have to live outside. Eat, you know, eat your dinner in the park. <laughs> Sleep on the beach under the stars. All that horrible shit, you know. Uh, with a couple, you can't. I wouldn't do that with a couple. But alone, gee, if I was a solo, see, if, if, if. But it did all that shit. So, you know, it's nice to remember. And I did it in a time of life that was, you know, every generation has fond memories of their own generation. I would assume. Because even with all the bullshit, you know, with the government and uh, whatnot, I still had a good time. It's funny, Flash, because you can't see the Hansel comments I was responding to. Oh, I probably can't. But he's, I don't know, he's so predictable. He's, it's, you don't even have to read his text, just look at his name, you know. And when he agrees with you, panic. Oh, man, that, that's not a good thing. When you're up there with the likes of Hansel on a topic and you agree with him, ah, back off the topic. I'm not interested no more. That, that's, nah, that's all that, um, famous and, uh, TV, CNN, Fox, political crap. It's bullshit. It's not real. What is real is the way that we individually feel about the way we look at them. It's crap. <laughs> Cowboy Tech is hanging out with us. Hey, CT. And he's posting. Look at that. Look at that. Crazy man go. Yeah, Cowboy Tech. Who else, who else hasn't been? I thought, yeah, Cowboy Tech was a gone for a bit because he forgot his laptop and he'd be gone about three or four days because I usually see him when I come on and I'd notice and my wife says hey you seen Cowboy Tech and I said no nope. I bet he probably just uh, took a job or something and he can't be you know can't make it to the computer I was close he forgot his computer when he went to work on a job <laughs> so I almost called that one but uh, it, but after about a week, people were on the RLM. <laughs> hey, have you seen Cowboy Tech? He's missing in action. And you know, you had the room's attention. And I think that that is the point, you know, of really underneath all the getting along with each other and crap, is when somebody's missing like that, and then people go, hey, let's find out what's going on. <laughs> somebody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that has the answer. When it's just like how it's supposed to actually work. Instead of the, the lies and the deception, you know, to get you to go line up to get a flu shot. We know how to find Cowboy Tech when he's not available. <laughs> and the person that started, it's like a rumor. It's like the same, uh, egg. it's like the same re results of you start a rumor and 30 people later, it's a completely different thing than you started. But when you're looking for somebody on the, you know, electronic world, and you're dealing with people like this that have, you know, history with each other. Oddly enough, you're bound to find somebody that's got a freaking phone number. And and the person that started it might not necessarily know that. So, you know, it goes through its chain of command in, in the electronic world on its vibration. That's the way I'm learning to look at it. So it's more interesting to see it for me that way. But, uh, 
I never had a moment where I thought, ah, some some horrible thing fell on Cowboy. I just thought he was working. <laughs> so I was proud of myself for being optimistic and uh, being correct. It's nice to be right once in a while, you know, because some people want it. Uh, they're rooting on the meteor. <laughs> Smack us, meteor. Hit me right here. But, uh... <laughs> Is he kidding or is he serious? I wonder. Is he just hoping the meteor hits me? <laughs> or does he want the meteor to hit us all the same? Hmm. I just don't know. But I guess we'll carry on through it one way or the other. Anybody want to boycott Nestle with me? I'm thinking of seriously doing that. i got to start researching because I like chocolate. And my wife likes the chocolate. So, we have to compromise, and we're in, you know, Denmark in the first place. But Nestle is a huge company. So, to all of you out there in Radio Land that, you know, think that your voice together will make a difference, if you want to put this down on the list, things you can do if you want to do them. It's organizing a group big enough to do it all at one time. Uh, I f remember when Mary was... They had some World Series or something ball game. Two million people crowded the streets. Oh, everybody was so happy. They had a World Series with no violence. Ooh, hoo 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 And at that time, I said, two million people gather at one time, and you don't take the damn opportunity to show them a video about the reality of cannabis? No. Okay, well, a couple of years go by, and I saw a link today about the same fucking thing. They're showing... Two million people gathered, and this is the best we could do. <laughs> you know, not have a riot. There's an accomplishment, you know. So I think the bigger the crowd, the more controlled the input into that crowd. So like I was saying at the beginning, because Grim was saying, oh, I got a billion things on Twitter. I don't like Twitter. I like the uh, I like the small capable hands of the real liberty media dot com and I like minds and uh, I like the RLO I do that a couple times a week uh, to, to keep it keep it alive so to speak it's, it's great uh, I tried to get back on um, free freedoms network and I messed that up so bad I'm embarrassed to even bring it to you because you probably have to go on my damn, uh, that new window thing <laughs> to look at my computer to see what I fucked up. <laughs> but uh, I w what I did was I tried to get in, and I couldn't. So I figured I'd create a new name. And then I fucked up something by doing that because I used the same damn um, email address. So, eh, I don't know. But, see, again, I'm not concerned about uh, everybody agreeing with me and Oh, I'm so popular, and everybody's following me everywhere. My cult is at four and holding. I'm really satisfied, to be honest, with uh, four is enough. And the cat, well, he, he's <laughs> he's still he's still hanging in with us. This this old boy could last ten more years the way he's going. But he's a wild cat. He likes to go outside, and he comes back every time, dinged up and hopping. And he needs to, you know, do what I did, which is. Uh, settle down <laughs> but he's a wild animal and i am a man i'm a living carbon-based life form of the man persuasion baby top that i've got opposing thumbs i have the ability to tell you to go fuck yourself now can a cat or a dog do that really no what's what are they going to do you got the opposing thumbs you can come up with 50 ways that dog and cat can't survive. And that's what we've become. Ooh, we're very unattractive human life forms. You know, I'd like to see people do something productive, like maybe a little gardening. Like, who's that maniac, that anarchist scum fucker that's uh, Grimner? Uh, yeah, and he's in not, not in a good climate to uh, produce any, any vegetables. I wouldn't assume... You'd get a lot of variety, is what I'm saying. 
the desert can be cruel, but man, when it grows something, it grows it like fucking weeds. <laughs> when it won't, it won't. Like here, we got the same situation. Some things flourish, and other things, you really have to work with them. And I'm not a gardener or a farmer by nature. I had to learn all this stuff. I was a city boy, man. Uh, <laughs> And I had to learn everything the hard way by, by doing it or listening to somebody else that did it tell me how to. And fortune is with me because um, sometimes I can have information ex told to me by an experienced person if it's done in the proper fashion. And sometimes you can tell me five different ways and I don't doesn't click, like with the computer. The computer just goes against my uh, my nature. Whatever my nature is, it's not organized and done in sequences like the computer is. So I have the hardest time uh, remembering, but it comes with repetition. Like I use my broadcaster now. After all these years, of course, we've, we've come to a, a final conclusion on what software for me to use. And Grimner came up with the most simple program for me in all I do is click. All I have to do is uh, type a few things and change a date and click a button. And boom, I'm on the radio just like a normal person. But for months, I was having trouble because the computer, I think the hardware and, uh, and the uh, software, whatever's running everything, was designed to outgrow the USB port so uh, headset I was using and require something more that that old equipment didn't have. So, finally broke down and got a new set and took off my external, all the toys I was playing with that were fucking it up, uh, messing with the computer in ways that I shouldn't have been in the first place. Now, I've eliminated all that, just made the computer as simple as possible, try to do my podcasts and get my ideas out there in the radio world for you know people to disagree or, or to agree with. Or maybe to find their own freaking answer, because I don't, the only one size fits all is be honest, whatever honest is. So if you're taught lies, and you're out there thinking you're being honest because you're repeating lies and don't know it, that is not your fault. I do not hold you personally responsible for that for the first six months. After six months, then it's on you, bucko. If you haven't figured it out by now, you're not going to, or you're playing me like I'm some kind of dumbass, and that's that. I'm not. You know that. I know that. But we call each other that all the time to keep the illusion alive. The, the separation, the division, you know. If we're not fighting with each other, then we're doing it wrong. <laughs> because... That is the purpose of society, is for us to be on one side of the coin or the other to pick the right man to lead you to the right place so that you can do the right thing. And they've been lying and lying and lying the whole fucking time. Now, I think I see it in ways differently than other folk like this. This love affair that... Um, Trump and the Queen of England have now. You know, he's going over there and he's getting her nipples all hard and shit. The last time he went over there, it didn't go so good. He looked like a, he looked like a, uh, like a rube, you know. He had his good purse and his bad shoes. But he did. And then now this trip, he's going over there and there's opposition to him being there. And there's people for him being there. What the fuck does that have to do with anything at all? in anybody's life whether or not the English trade with us on a global scale I mean how many people are gonna get an English toaster because we got trade agreement with England <laughs> I think it's that simple but mm, other people don't they think it's all complicated it's all fucking it's a scam we're being hustled by bankers to pretend that there's different classes of people and you justify that with look at what they possess. <laughs> so, you know, the guy running around in a Cadillac that thinks he's got a big deal car, 
the guy that's running around in the Ferrari is laughing at him. <laughs> and then the guy that's flying around in a helicopter is laughing at the guy in the Ferrari. The guy that's got a yacht and a helicopter and a Ferrari and a thing. See, just the chain, and it just never ends for us. But <laughs> if you don't want to play in it, people don't like that. You know, They call you names when you don't want to play in that world. They go, you're an anarchist scum. You don't want to follow these here orders that were written down by some dead guy a long time ago and signed by these other dead guys. So you are a disgrace to your nation. And, <laughs> and there's a lot of that shit that still goes on. I see it every day <clears throat> on Minds.com. An incredible amount of statists. An incredible amount of uh, <clears throat> Trump supporters. And on the other side, you know, the uh, not an incredible amount, but that liberal side of shit where it's okay to be this and inclusive and diverse and all that bullshit talk. Because that, that's really all it is, is bullshit. If you want to be inclusive and diverse, then that's how you'll live your fucking life. You won't need a government to push it down your throat, you know, and stuff it up your ass. But there are those among us. I hate to tell you people, if you're not sitting down at the end of this show, you should be by now. This is going to stink. There are those among us that cannot live a life. They cannot be trusted in life without rules and regulation and punishment. Because those people have nasty ideas. And they're rotten. And they express that by constantly demanding people be punished for their crimes against society. Well... I had a lot of fun ranting about absolutely nothing tonight. Just jibber-jabbering on, and maybe I read a link. <laughs> had a little bit of marijuana to enjoy my time on the radio with you good folks. And I really do, I, this I know, I've read my uh, people, how many people will see my links on certain uh, di distribution sites. And it's not huge numbers, which I'm really good with, because at least... When you're small, then you know people are, are actually paying attention. And if they're not agreeing, and maybe they're listening just enough to go look for the answer on their own. Because once you look for the the true answer to the true question, uh, you can't go back. I'll give you. I'll give that this. Uh, Miss Mary, boy, she she's been running forward ever since I met her. She's been going. Phew. Other people not so much, but. Uh, you get what you want out of life. And I think that's what we uh, on the radio try to keep on the forefront. You know, If you're not happy, you're the one that's not happy. So what's coming up on the Real Liberty Media? Oh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Appreciate it tonight. We've got Friday, more, Friday tomorrow. I'm not sure if Vinny's going to do a uh, Ponder Gander, but tell me if you are or not. He's on the main feed. He'll catch up to me. I'll say he is, and if he's not, I'll come back and fix it. One o'clock on the East Coast on Friday, a Ponder Gander with your host, Vincent Easley. And then at seven o'clock, and on Wednesday too, but seven o'clock Friday night, Graham Z flies off in the rocket chair on the seven o'clock East Coast. And then at 11, the big shot, Mr. Grimner and the Moose Girl will do Breaker's Ball. 11 o'clock on the East Coast, Friday nights. And uh, Saturday, I come back with the dork table. I don't know. Maybe I'll trap Mary. Mary's been uh, stuck with weather lately. Who knows? Maybe I can squeeze an hour out of that old woman after all. We never know. Uh, that'll be noon on the East Coast for Saturday. And then Sunday morning, Grimner comes along with the blues. Plays the blues. Then we we'll play some trivia, listen to some blues, or I watch movies and play trivia, or I do other things and play trivia. But the blues are still there. Then 3 o'clock on the East Coast Sunday, Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed and shows us all how it's done on paper. It's very important stuff, too. I, I know I don't play it up enough, but hmm, 
you know, out of sight, out of mind. And then we got Chuck Ocelli with the Ocelli Factor. Uh, I I forgot the time, but he's on the schedule. So if you're a Chuck Ocelli fan, if you're not, check his show out Monday through Friday on the Real Liberty Media. He's got his own channel, too, and I didn't open up the damn page, so I'm going off memory. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grimner comes back with Grim Leftovers. That's the... Uh, <laughs> The interesting stories of the week that he missed got, getting a chance to read on the uh, Freakers Ball that Friday night. And then Tuesday, I think Vinny and me are done as a team on uh, in a perfect world. I don't think Vinny's going to be back for maybe for a while. Or if he's not gone, he might do one more show. <laughs> She's a year older than me, man, and I'm old. So what do you think she is? Crying out loud. She's no spring chicken. She'll whip your ass. I'm telling you that. Ramsey's wild. Anyway, uh, I don't know if Vinny's going to do the show or not with me, but we'll find out. And then Wednesday, Gramsy, 7 o'clock, Rocket Chair Podcast, East Coast time. And then Thursday night, I'll be back. This particular show I wanted to do. This was something I wanted. Uh, but Tuesday, I wanted to do something with somebody else. So if I can't get a, a replacement... I might want to pass up on uh, doing In a Perfect World because my perfect world is not being solo at all in any shape, way. No, I like to have partners and friends and you know people to interact with. Uh, this to Thursday night, I, I was given a little bit of an attempt at being more serious and trying to get a better, you know, rather than the dark table where I'm screwing around all the damn time. Uh, but... Yeah, if I can't replace uh, old Vince, and I think I'm going to pass on uh, doing Tuesday nights. Or maybe I'll just put it off for a while until he gets back. And uh, we'll try to reorganize, because he said he was going to Utah. And mobile or not, he might be able to do a show, he might not. We'll work all the details out later. Anyway, thanks everybody. It's been I always have a good time ranting about what the fuck I think about absolutely nothing. Because it's just me talking, you know, it's how I see my life, my world, and some people out there in the electronic world, you don't share my world, you share my reality in the electronic world. So, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time, or we won't. Have a good one. Bye.